Heat exchange is a topic that chemical engineers must be well versed in to be good designers. And what I'm going to do in this video is go through the considerations that a chemical engineer will take into account when determining what kind of flow system to operate a heat exchanger in, as well as what area will be required to transfer a given quantity of power, such as watts, between two phases. And this would be needed, for instance, if we wanted to preheat a reactor feed or if we wanted to cool down uh, a reactor effluent to a given temperature before we could sell it or something like that. And so I've drawn two the two flow systems that uh, people will commonly come across in practice here, the co-current system and the counter-current system. And if we take a step back and ask ourselves what is heat flux. Um, heat flux is defined to be some proportionality constant times a driving force for heat transfer. And heat transfer driving force is a difference in temperature between two phases. And when we work with a co-current system, which intuitively I think many people, myself included, would go with until we look at this model a little bit deeper, is you would have a hot stream flowing alongside a cold stream. And if we did that, we would realize a temperature profile that looks like this. And so we would see that we get a very nice delta T initially. And this means it has a very, has a great driving force for heat transfer, I shall abbreviate HT. So immediately inside of our heat exchanger, we're getting excellent heat exchange, but we see that because it is a co-current design, this delta T that existed, that was very great initially, diminishes rapidly. And we eventually get to a point in which delta T is very small. And if we have a very small temperature difference between two phases, the heat transfer that will exist is very small because there's no driving force anymore. Um, and this is bad. And so what we do is we turn to a different type of flow referred to as countercurrent flow. And in countercurrent flow, we have our coolant running opposite to our reactor effluent, for instance. And what is nice about these kinds of models or flow systems is that we maximize the temperature difference for each uh, point inside of our heat exchanger. And so what we find is we get very nice delta T's throughout our system. So we maintain Uh, a large temperature difference between our two phases and therefore realize excellent heat transfer. And so uh, that's typically one of the first questions or things you're going to learn in the chemical engineering course is you always go with countercurrent systems. There's very little reason or logic behind running a co-current system. And so uh, with that established, the question now is um, how to size a heat exchanger. And so um, let's say we need to remove Q joules of heat per second from an effluent stream. And so this Q value will be very important because um, we can turn to uh, a governing equation for, and this is referred to as, sorry, counter current uh, 
shell and tube heat exchange. And in this governing equation, we know that Q is equivalent to U, which is an overall heat transfer coefficient, times an area, times a log mean temperature difference delta T sub LM. And so this is an overall heat transfer coefficient. And overall heat transfer coefficients are commonly things that are tabulated. which means that they are dependent on the properties of the materials you're working with, uh, such as the phase. So if we're dealing with a liquid-liquid heat transfer, they will generally, or they almost always will have higher heat transfer coefficients than vapor-vapor heat transfer coefficients. Um, but this is a value that you would be given a priori. Um, we would also need to know what kind of area we're dealing with. And then this thing here is referred to as a log mean temperature difference. And what the log mean temperature difference is, uh, to kind of simply state it, it is if we defined uh, one side of our counter current heat exchanger to be side one, and I'll let this be side two. I will let a variable called delta T1 be equivalent to the temperature difference on side one of our countercurrent heat exchanger, which would be TH in minus TC out. And I will let delta T2 be the temperature difference or the driving force uh, on the opposite side of our countercurrent heat exchanger, which in this case would be TH out minus TC in. What we take with these two variables is we define the log mean temperature difference to be equivalent to delta T1 minus delta T2 divided by the natural logarithm of delta T1 over delta T2. And so with this defined, what we can do now is what area is required to exchange Q joules per second of heat between two phases. The answer to that is you would have area is equal to Q divided by U times your log mean temperature difference. And so this is very useful in practice if we wanted to begin to understand how big of a heat exchanger we're going to need to have um, to preheat a reactor feed or cool down some important unit. Um, and so this wraps up the motivation behind why we go with counter current heat exchangers and how we can begin to size them up. Um, and so I hope you guys find this useful. Let me know if you have any questions and thanks for watching.